Over the next 30 days, Kimball, Ben, and I are going to build an off-grid setup for under $25,000. The entire setup, including the land, will cost less than the down payment of today's average American home. And by the end of the setup, you'll never have to pay for utilities again. In this series, we're going to show you how to begin with a starter shelter, like a canvas bell tent, then how to implement a rainwater catchment system for drinking water, a methane digester for green sanitation and cooking fuel, solar panels and a battery system for clean energy, raised beds for local food, and finally, a micro cabin for a more permanent shelter. These systems will meet your water, sanitation, energy, food, and shelter requirements. This is Off Grid in 30 Days. We had thought about building a cabin from the ground up with the studs and the plywood and the tin roofing, but for the sake of showing how plug and play these off-grid systems can be, we're buying a micro cabin from a portable shed company. These portable sheds range from five to $15,000. The micro shed that we're purchasing is 10 by 16 feet. It's gonna cost just over $6,000 and they deliver it to us on site. We want something that's very portable. We don't wanna pay a whole lot of money for a trailer to build a tiny house on wheels. We've done that before. We want something that can be pulled up by the truck to be moved where it needs to go. But before you get going in your cabin shell, the most accessible off-grid dwelling is typically a canvas tent. So we're going to clear the area up there, trim the branches back, mow the grass down so we've got a clean build site for our canvas tent. Then we're going to get cracking on the micro cabin. While Kimball utilizes the truck to get to the higher branches for cutting, Ben's gonna start mowing. Okay guys, so for the belt in, it needs to be a nice and level surface. So I'm using this electric mower that we actually charge using solar. And I'm gonna mow a small circle that the belt in can go on so it's nice and clean. And while Ben was clearing an area for the bell tent, Kimball was clearing an area for the micro cabin. When Ben was finished with the bell tent area, he then started working on paths, which are really great for structuring your off-grid site. Once Kimball was done making space for the micro cabin, he then made a designated burn pile away from the woods. Then he started to compost. We're not wasting anything. All the grass clippings are gonna be composted to start building that rich soil for all of our raised beds from Epic Gardening. All right, so we've done with the mowing and we're wrapped up with all the trimming. One cool side note, the mowers and the power tools we're using can all be charged by our solar rig. So we're literally using sunlight to do all this cutting. Now that we've got the site cleared for where the canvas tent's gonna go and the micro cabin, we are gonna go grab the canvas tent from our friends Life in Tents. We're super stoked to set up this tent before we've never set one of theirs up. And that's gonna be our initial shelter here at the off-grid site. We're about to go cook some apples using our Go Sun solar oven for a midday snack. Apples smell amazing. The steam is actually really hot coming out of the ghost sun. Here we go. Look at that. Apples cooked by sunlight. They're hot, but they're delicious. Really good. We've never put this model of bell tent together before, but once we started, it only took us about two hours to finish it. It was really straightforward and really fun. Just like that, the bell tent is now put together. All that's left for today is to go pick out a cabin shell and order it. It's gonna take about seven to 10 days to get the shed delivered, so we're gonna go order that now just so we can save on time. We're currently on our way to go pick out a cabin shell. We've already kind of looked at it before and it seemed like a really good fit, but today we're just gonna be verifying that. The portable shed place we're going to has cabins and portable structures created by Mennonites down in Montezuma, Georgia. Mennonites, in so far that I understand, are like slightly high-tech Amish. What is the location called? Montezuma, Georgia. It's where all the Aztec gods came from. Oh, I'm well, kidding. <laughs> oh, no, I bought that. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I feel kind of like an idiot. This one's actually way bigger than we need. 
This one looks like someone started finishing it out, but it was probably a repo. See, they did the spray foam and they started like putting um, drywall up, but I mean, it's an awesome structure for a small house. There's a lot of bigger sheds here that would work great for a bigger project. Our micro cabin is specifically built to be tiny in every respect to be more energy efficient. And you could make any one of these an off-grid dwelling. We're gonna go check out one that looks like it could be a good potential fit and at least get some photos of the wiring. Um, but it looks like the other location will probably have a better fit for us. This site's got a shell design we really like for the micro cabin. So let's go check it out. So we're currently waiting on the owner to get back. She's the one that's gonna be able to tell us more about the specs and whatnot. It's pretty warm out. Uh, by the way, Ben, we actually found your home. Uh, Kim and I will be staying in this. We're thinking something like this is gonna be perfect for you. Ben's bird home? Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> one of the things we like about this shell design is we just need one gutter for rainwater harvesting. So that tin roof allows us to harvest rainwater. You don't harvest rainwater from an asphalt roof. So one gutter, and then the IBC tanks all go back here with their covers. They stay in the shade. If they're in sunlight, they'll grow more algae. So we want the IBC tanks for water shaded. They're back here. The methane digester will be somewhere within, you know, 10 feet of, 10, 20 feet of the off-grid cabin. Joe? Don't break it. Welcome to the Taj. Ooh, it's nice and warm. So one of the reasons I like this shed as opposed to other shed shells, these are 16 inch on center studs. Other sheds were doing 22 inches, which isn't going to provide as much structural support. This is closer to what you get on an actual house build. You hear that, dude? 16, not 22. Okay. He's mocking me. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> he was. The owner arrived just a few minutes later, and we were able to complete our purchase. We then headed back home, but first stopped to get some coffee. Because Ben's nice and healthy, he got mango juice. Kimball got a nice little cup of coffee with a giant refill. <laughs> Whoa. And I got a Yoohoo, and also a mango drink to try to be healthy like Ben. It was kind of gross. Ooh. We have covered probably seven, mm, we've probably covered 40 to 50 miles today drive time. And most everything we've seen is just awful. Gas stations, just nothing but concrete highways, fast food. This little coffee shop in our walkable downtown is the most pleasant place we've been to all day long. And it's wonderful. It's on the walkable downtown. It just, it really drives home the point how we desperately need to reinvent the world around us to be walkable, to where we have places we actually want to be. Because we've covered so much ground today to go get that cabin shell. And most of it, there's nowhere you'd want to hang out. It's just all highway, all gas stations. It's pretty rough. We are at the end of the first day of the off-grid build. We've still got to install electrical systems, off-grid power systems, water systems, methane digesters, get the solar ovens out here. There's a lot left to do. I mean, we've got a solid month left, but this is a pretty good foundation. Was there anything that was harder than y'all thought it would be today? I think everything always takes more time than we anticipate. Like Ben said, it would take 15 minutes to set up the rest of the tent, and yeah, like an hour and a half later. Like yeah, hour. Ben. I didn't have any apples from the ghost sun, because Kimball ate them all. Well, I did I... eat all the get apples from the ghost sun. They were delicious. It was like applesauce. As we get further into the off-grid series, we'll start producing more of our food after we install all, all of the epic gardening raised beds and other epic gardening products. Big thanks to Life in Tents. That's the 20-foot tent from the Life in Tents brand. We'll link to Life in Tents and that specific tent model with the accessories. It seems to be super sturdy and well-built. Uh, canvas breathes really well in cool and hot weather. So I'm excited to use that for our first temporary off-grid shelter. I mean, I think that covers it for day one for the off-grid series. Yeah, it was really good. Well, we'll see you next time for day two on the off-grid series. Until next time, we'll see you on the next video.